Hey, welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair. Welcome to Streaming Idiots. I am the number one idiot, especially today. <laughs> I don't know why. It just seems like Wednesdays, you know. I, 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 I tell you this every week. I break the rules. I really have to. I, I want to do things because I don't want you to make the same mistakes I do. And also because at the last minute I start having all these great ideas. What if I could do this or do that or do the other? And how much, how much better it would make the broadcast? How much more enjoyable it would be for you? I'll tell you all about that in just a second. Welcome to the show. The idea behind the show is that one guy with, uh, with a PC properly configured and properly loaded with all sorts of toys can do a pretty darn good broadcast. You don't have to have a room full of PCs. You don't have to have a, an engineering degree or an IT degree or, or just be, uh, you, in fact, you don't have to be tremendously tech savvy. I know everybody's going to cringe and go, oh, no, I can't believe he said that. But it really is true. You don't have to be a tech genius to do this stuff. You have to be patient. You have to be willing to learn, and you have to have a passion for whatever it is you want to broadcast because that passion is going to be the fuel that's going to, going to get you through all the trials and tribulations that come from getting on the air. I get emails every day. It's, it's a hoot, and I appreciate your emails. And if you've sent me one later, I mean, if you've sent me one already, I'm, really, I'm not laughing at yours. No, I'm teasing. I'm terrible. But I do love some of the emails that I get because they help me understand where people are coming from when they're thinking about streaming. For some folks, streaming is just, it's just magic. It's just magic. Just somehow the camera and, the, and, and what you're saying get on the internet and how in the world does that happen? And maybe if I hook enough things up to enough other things, maybe it will work. Uh, my favorite misconception, and I'll, I'll share this with you and then we'll move on. My favorite misconception is that uh, so many of the consumer camcorders have a USB cable. Well, if you've got a USB cable, <laughs> that must be so that you can plug the camera into the PC or into the laptop and, and have live video like Tom does. And, you know, it... it it does make sense. It is a logical one, two, three step. I, I, I like that. That's the way we need to think. We need to think logically when we do this stuff. But it isn't the way that happens to work with that particular device. That, that uh, USB cable is for file transfer, assuming that you've already recorded something and that you're going to download it to your PC for editing later. It's not for live streaming, at least 99% of the time. There may be that rare camera out there that really is equipped with USB for live streaming. Now, the camera that I'm, I'm talking, I'm not, I'm not talking to you on this camera. The camera that you're looking at me with right now is a very inexpensive Canon Vixia. Uh, it's HD. It's an HF R100. It was the very first in the line of Vixias. I think they're up to the HF R600 now. And it's, you know, it's a it's a decent little camera for what we use it for. Here in the studio, it's HD, it's 1080p, um, it, it does a good job. It, uh, it doesn't like low light, it doesn't like fast movement. Um, so I've used it in sports, and it, and it seems to do well, but the key in sports is not a lot of camera movement. Use, use your zoom um, and, and use multiple cameras. And that, uh, oh, somebody's giving me a, a, a recommendation here. Oh, no, sorry, it's Kent with a question. Kent, I'm going to ask you, answer your question in just a second. That's a good question. He was talking about recording. Anyway, uh, cameras, USB cables, plugging them in. Um, ask me your questions. I'd be happy to answer them. And if it's a particularly juicy question, we'll probably even answer it on air. Um, somebody did ask last night about, you know, they were, they were working in their church and they want to set up streaming and they want to do a couple of cameras and they've heard that they need some stuff, but where do they start? Where do you start? Well, you start by gathering information. You don't start by buying stuff. Well, I got a call from a guy, uh, I guess probably about six or eight weeks ago, and he'd bought some cameras and he had a computer and uh, 
it was time to make him work. And, you know, he didn't have all the pieces and he didn't understand what he was working with. So, so do some research. I've got some, I've got some videos out there on YouTube, three of them that I've identified that um, were kind of starter videos. You know, if you had to start on a budget, where would you start? And one of them is really old, one of them is kind of old, and one of them is a little old. But the basic concepts still apply. There's certain piece parts you need if you're going to be streaming, especially if you're going to be putting it together as kind of a homemade rig like I used when I very first started out. Uh, you can start with a webcam and a laptop and, and away you go and a place to stream and an internet connection and, and, and there you go. But I think there's a step better than that. In fact, we're putting together a little kit that we'll have in our store that'll retail. I think it's going to retail for about, I don't know, 60, 70 bucks, something like that, that will include a book, well, probably an e-book actually, um, on how to put it all together and the necessary components that a list of components that you either need to beg, borrow, buy, steal to, uh, to make it work. And we include one of the components with the, with the kit so that if you borrow a camcorder and borrow a PC, um, then you can make it work with two borrowed items and the, and the rest of that stuff we supply. Anyway, that's, that's, that's coming down the pike. It's going to be fun. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about audio because that was one of the issues I was struggling with earlier today. Uh, we do have a, a, a Magewell uh, vMix bundle in our store at easternshorebroadcasting.com that uh, it's on sale through, um, through day after day after tomorrow. It's, anyways, it's on sale through the 31st, um, but it bundles the Magewell Pro Capture quad HDMI card, so that's four HDMI inputs, with vMix Pro, and that's the vMix highest version. Um, if you need something other than the Pro, just shoot me an email and we'll probably work out a, a deal for you. Um, we've also added to our store Camtasia, and that is a really cool piece of software that allows you to do screen capture and then edit your screen captures later. So if you're doing for something for teaching and you're doing a lesson plan, uh, something you want to show the kids on the screen, uh, if you're doing tutorials, like uh, that's the, one of the reasons why I put it in the stores because I'm, I'm going to be using it myself and so I'll develop some expertise with it as I put together some more tutorials and allows you to zoom in on different areas and highlight it and draw boxes around it. And, and bring in video and audio from other sources, so that's going to be fun to play with, and we'll uh, we'll have that in the store very shortly. Um, also have on hand today the uh, the AOC USB monitor, and so I wanted to show you that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun and a product that you're probably going to like. Hey, Justin's here. Welcome, Justin. Um, but Ken has asked a question. He, he, he says, does anybody have a good recommendation for a good, a good, not a bad, but a good external hard drive to record to? Something that might save some CPUs during streaming and recording. Um, depending on how your PC is configured, Ken, I'm going to have a go at your question right here. Depending on how your PC is configured, you're probably not going to find what you're looking for. You're probably not going to find an external hard drive device that will take the, the weight off your CPU. The CPU is still going to have to do the processing it needs to do in order to, to get that video to the point where you can record it. Um, it might be better to look towards an internal hard drive that's not a hard drive, that's a solid state drive, something that might be able to record a little faster than a platter drive and, and therefore wouldn't uh, challenge your, your, um, your SATA bus quite so much, well, or just, just would empty the bus faster. Um, boy, am I going in over my head on that one. Um, but the chances are, if you've got a CPU problem, um, you want to address the problem and not the symptoms. If the symptoms, you know, tend to show up different places, well, let's draw it. In fact, I had a similar problem here. In fact, sometimes I still do, where I was running uh, recording and streaming on the same PC. And by the way, today we're streaming 720p 
we're streaming 180p and we're, we're recording what are we recording are we recording oh my gosh we're recording 1080 okay we're recording 1080 um, and the CPU usage is uh, 67 68 66 percent um, so that's pretty decent the um, as I mentioned in the pre-show this is not a, a you know balls to the wall PC this is built around a, a second generation Intel i7 quad core processor the 2600k which is a, a good little processor I mean it, it, it tends to score well in the in the quad world I think it even scored better than some of the third generations but uh, it comes in I think at uh, 3.4 gigahertz and and I've overclocked it to 4.2 I tried 4.5 but that was just not stable enough so we or do we back it I don't remember if we backed it back to 3.8 or 4.2 anyway it's overclocked a tad maybe about 10 percent but the key really is not so much the CPU, but the things that are calling on the CPU. And in our case, we were using uh, we were using VidBlaster, and we were using Wirecast, and in a combo with VidBlaster to produce our show, and Wirecast to record it and stream it. And then uh, then we decided to try VMix, so we were using VMix to record. Excuse me, VMix to produce and Wirecast to stream and record. And then we realized, well, Wirecast and, and vMix both have about the same capability in terms of recording and streaming to not use as much CPU because they're using the graphics card. Uh, Wirecast likes a Radeon, graph, ATI Radeon card, and vMix likes the NVIDIA series. So if you're planning a PC based on on either one of those platforms make sure you pay attention to those details the um, and so we got an NVIDIA card in and started offloading a lot of the processing to the, the video card and that was that was the ticket and then um, and and then vMix excuse me VidBlaster came out with version 4 which was really lightweight a real breakthrough for VidBlaster especially in streaming and recording so we were we were using VidBlaster to stream and record. We would use uh, VMix to record the 720 stream uh, as 720, and uh, VidBlaster to record the. Excuse me. We were using VMix to stream the 720, VidBlaster to record the 720, and stream the 180. And that's because I was not very good with VMix, and as I've improved with VMix. Uh, we're now streaming uh, two feeds from vMix, a 720 and a 180, and we're recording 1080 at 64%. Um, so I think, Kent, that you may want to look at the software you're using and make sure that you've got your PC properly configured for that software. Um, and if you're using a laptop, then in some cases you may be a little... Uh, you may be a little sunk. Let's see if I can show you. Um, yeah, let's let's pop over to this. We're going to come to uh, to this shot. Let's see if we can pull up this shot. It's a it's not in very good focus. That's my my bad for not getting to it earlier. But let's let's go over this. This is right right over my shoulders here. Um, here is an ASUS ROG laptop. Um, and this is the laptop that we use to to sh to produce, stream, and record our shows for the last two weeks. Now, you, you, if you've seen the shows, you know we had some audio issues, but they were not really the fault of the, the laptop. They were the fault of the the operator. Um, but this is a it it's a I bought it as a, a factory refurb. I think it was about um, about twelve or thirteen hundred. So it was, it was really well priced. Um, the reason I wanted this particular one is because it, even though it's a Windows PC, it has a Thunderbolt port. And, and so we were developing this Thunderbolt video attachment 
that allowed us to to stream four HD cams through the through the Thunderbolt into this laptop. So that was a lot of fun, and that's that was the purpose of this laptop to have a real heavy duty travel machine. But I would think too that if you're looking for something to put in your studio um, that has some portability, that this would be a good option with that with the Thunderbolt device. Um, and we will have the Thunderbolt device in our, our store real, real shortly. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to this little guy here in, in just a second. But uh, Kent, to try to answer as much of your question as I can, you know, tr try, to, try to fix the problem at the source, not at the symptom. Um, and I think uh, if Martin were here, he'd, he would be able to tell us that, uh, you know, there's really not that much tremendous CPU activity in, in storing video on a hard drive. Um, okay. Somebody's asked a question. Have you ever heard of, after about an hour, Windows stops the recording because of length or file size? I haven't heard of that. Um, that's Justin asking that question, and, and Justin, I understand that you had that issue before and we don't know why. Is there a setting in vMix for correcting this? Um, Justin, after the show, maybe here in post-show, we can take a look at that a little deeper and, and maybe Google if uh, there's something about that, but that's news to me. Um, when we used to do hour-long shows, we never had any problems if the show ran over 20 minutes. Um, not an issue. I know my friend Amnon Nissan that does the t Computers 2K Now show on Sundays. Yeah, generally that's a three-hour show, and he's recording it um, on a Windows PC, so I don't think that's a Windows issue. Um, but maybe we can do a little research after the show and, and, uh, and see if we can figure that out. If anybody's got some ideas on that one, I'm sure Justin would love to have, uh, have your thoughts on that. All right, let's um, let's take a look at this little at this little monitor. Um, this little guy is really cool. It's a 16-inch AOC monitor, and uh, let me show you how hard it is to use. And my audio might be a little creepy here for a second as I turn my head, but we've got this monitor, and it's got this really uh, easy to use. Uh, USB cable right here and so now it's black and you can swivel around the little stand so that it fits into your backpack where you're going to put your laptop that's pretty cool and I'll send it back out and I don't even know that I even installed any software in this. I just plugged in and gave it a chance. And there it is. Oops. Somehow I told it it's got a different orientation. It thinks it's like this. So we'll send it back like that. There we go. And, and that's as hard as it is. It, it, uh, for some reason, it's simple. And in this case, yeah, I've got it set up as an extended monitor. So I can operate separately on it. The vMix you see in the background is just the, just the desktop but we can bring vMix up on it. And it's it's pretty darn responsive. It's as good as any monitor I've used. And it's and it's wonderfully, wonderfully portable. Um, that's the, the, the real beauty of it, is that uh, you know, it becomes an instant monitor. The, uh, the local high school here does broadcasts for their sporting events, and they always include in their broadcast gear 
an extra monitor for the announcers so that the announcers can see what's going on with uh, the instant replay or if uh, they need to see some stats that people at home are seeing but they're not seeing they can they can see them that way and a a uh, monitor like this either becomes a good one for the announcers if they're within the reach of the USB cord or if you're running a two monitor setup you can give them one of your monitors and then keep the USB monitor and still have that second monitor there at your work area your your directing area so I think that little guy I'll give you another shot of it again um, really is a, a neat little attachment. It was, uh, I think it was under a hundred dollars. It was about, let's see if we've got a price here online somewhere. Um, on the AOC website, but that doesn't really help. Uh, let's see, let's go back. Yeah, it looks like uh, 90 bucks at BH Photo. Um, probably the same thing on Amazon. Looks like you can even buy them at Best Buy. Um, wow, can't can't beat that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, somebody says buffering as soon as you unplug the monitor. Really? That's interesting because they're not connected to this streaming setup at all. How about that? All right. All right, looks like Dave has given Justin a tip in there. It says, uh, at the bottom of the recording setup screen, there's a window that allows you to set a time limit to start a new recording file. Make sure it's set to none. Um, but that, does, that didn't appear to be Justin's answer because he already had it set to none. Interesting. Great, great uh, exchange of information in the chat here if you're watching live. And I would invite all of our YouTube friends to come watch us live easternshorebroadcasting.com Wednesday afternoons 3, 3 o'clock Eastern 8 o'clock in London depending on the time change and 5 a.m. in Australia depending on what time of year it is uh, that would be Thursday morning actually in Australia um, so the AOC, AO, AOC USB monitor now I did try the same monitor with my old standby Dell 1521 dual core six-year-old laptop that's the one I use for email and it didn't work didn't work and and the, the cable for the monitor I'm gonna unplug it again we'll see if it causes us to buffer here the cable for the monitor has got the little mini USB on the monitor end and then it's got dual headed regular USBs on the other end and the idea is that you use one like I did just now or if that USB port is not powerful enough then you use the second one to supply extra power but my old laptop is uh, you know USB who knows, USB 0.04 or something, something 0. 0.0001, um, and, and apparently didn't have enough juice to run, to run the, uh, the monitor. So if you've got an older piece of equipment that you're working with, you might want to make sure that you can return this guy if it doesn't work. Um, it, the other thought, and I haven't tried it with a, uh, with a hub yet to see how it would work in a hub, for an older PC, so I may, may try that with my laptop. Bring it in here to the studio because I've got a hub that I'm running, I think, you know, keyboard and mouse and things like that through. Um, all right, all right. Tommy said no buffering when I unplugged it, so it must have been something else. Um, let's talk a little bit about audio. Because vMix, or vMix does a little different, uses audio a little differently. Um, one of the issues that, that vMix, Wirecast, and VidBlaster, the developers have, have, to have to deal with, is that audio comes from various sources. 
internally it can come from you know audio files mp3s and it can come from video files and it can also come what I would call externally that is from outside of the PC and I know there's some other internals we'll, we'll get to those for like Skype calls or things like that um, but if you if you have a, a microphone like uh, let's see like this good old uh, Audio Technica ATR2100 um, now it's got the ability to plug in USB so I can plug this directly into my PC but still that's an audio source coming from outside or I can plug it in XLR and, uh, and plug it into my mixer and then figure out a way to get my mixer into my PC and that's still an external audio input. When you connect something audio to your PC, Windows recognizes that you have attached something, whether it's a, a, a cable going to a, a mixer or like a USB cable, or whether it's a cable coming from the mixer going into the line in port on your PC or to the mic port on your PC. Uh, depending on your version of Windows, it will pick that up and it will ask you to sort of identify it and say, you know, what is it that you're, you're playing with here? And it will tell you what it is. For example, um, the outputs on my Behringer mixer, and I'll, I'll see if I can get a shot of that here for you guys. We were playing with that earlier. Um, the, uh, the outputs on my Behringer mixer I've got two different set of outputs. Whoa, got a little cable in the way there. Sorry about that. Um, the uh, one set of outputs are the U is the stereo output that the USB carry carries. The other is uh, stereo outputs from the mixer that I've got plugged into the line in port on the PC. So I know when I see line in in my software. Uh, that is a, an input in my PC, which of course is an output on my mixer, which always confuses me. But it's an input on my PC, and so it's going to be a source of audio for my software. And so depending on where I'm, whether I'm using VidBlast or Wirecast or vMix, um, I might have to identify in the different parts of the software how I want the software to handle that audio. Do I want it to record it? Do I want it to mix it? Do I want it to stream it? Um, how do I want it to handle that? Um, and vMix has a separate audio mixer that's built in that in an effort I think to sort of simplify it in some ways is, has complicated it. Um, can I show you a copy of my audio mixer? Do I have the capability to do that? Let's take a quick look at that. We'll do a desktop capture. The window is going to be audio mixer. There we go. And there it is. Boom. I think we showed that before. And you can see that uh, my audio, oh, it looks like it's attached to the front mic port. That would be the bottom right. And you can see I've got, a, I don't know if, if my mouse will show up on here. No, it doesn't look like it. But you can see directly in the left-hand column, you see outputs. And directly below that, you see two black bars. I'm going to right-click one of them, and that will expand that. So I can basically, I can make everything go smaller if I want so that I've got more room or I can expand it back again. Let's see, we don't need that one. Actually, we don't need any of the rest of them. But you get the idea. It's a, it's a separate audio mixer, and I can have multiple inputs, some of which are generated inside of vMix, and some of which are coming into the PC from outside sources. The um, Kind of the exception to the rule is if you've got audio coming from Skype, 
um, or from YouTube or something like that, you're going to have to identify the source and bring it in. And sometimes that can get just a, a, a tad tricky. But if you think of audio as a series of paths and gates, that will help you figure out how to route the audio from point A to point B. Um, Dave says that the specs for the AOC monitor say it won't work with Windows XP, so that's good to know. If you've got Windows XP, don't even try it. Although I guess you could try it. I'd tr I, would, I would probably try it. I would. Okay, I think we've got all that. Um, let's see, where are we going to go next with this? Um, and we're about out of time. Talk on it. Where does the time go? Okay. Well, we're not going to get to everything in the plan. My apologies. We've got more, more material here than, than we can deal with. But um, coming up next week, <laughs> we can tell you coming up next week, Coming up next week, uh, we will have, um, well, I will, I will post in show notes what's coming up next week. I want to make sure I've got my ducks in a row before I announce anything that you guys will hold me to. Um, if you have questions, shoot me an email, tom at Eastern Shore Broadcasting. I'll get the hang of this one day. At easternshorebroadcasting.com, I'd be happy to help you if you are interested in... Um, and talking with me about what's going on at your church or your school or wherever and you think I can help you uh, get things configured um, we can we can consult we can supply a turnkey outfit um, head to tail uh, we can supply piece parts and whatever component pieces you might be missing if you need us to come on site and help we with that we can do that too so a little commercial for that um, I guess that about wraps it up if you'll hang around, those of you that are live, uh, Tommy has got some some fried corn fritters uh, that he's going to share with us. So uh, so don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss that. That's a big feature uh, in real town, Alabama. And that's where Tommy is today. So thanks for tuning in. Um, if, I'm, if I'm lucky, I'll, I'll get my, my closing done properly. I somehow always seem to struggle with this. But... Uh, until next week, I'm Tom Sinclair, your streaming idiot. Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you soon.